Hello, viewers. Welcome to Senior College Mathematics. Topic of discussion is bearing. Lesson one, introduction. Before now, distance is always measured in kilometers or meters. But when we talk about bearing, we are concerned with angular distance when distance is measured in angles for example if you are going towards a cross junction and you were told that as you are going if you get to the junction you should turn 90 degrees to your left that means you, you are going to face the west from that junction. Or you should turn 90 degrees to your right. You are going to face east from that junction. That is simply bearing. Consider the diagram above. Take O as the starting point and ON as the direction of the north this is o the starting point o n is the north direction the bearing of an object a from o is the angle which o a makes with o in the clockwise sense that is from right to left we have an object a this A begins the movement from the north direction and the object stops at this point. The distance covered between the north and where the object is, is the angle that the object has covered. So the angle which OA makes with O in the clockwise direction bearing is the angular distance of an object or point from another point look at this object a there we have point n the angle from n to a that is the angular distance of the object a and that is bearing the bearing of a point from another is usually in clockwise direction measured in degree what this means is that when we are talking about bearing the movement is always from right to left that is clockwise direction the same way your work clock works from right to left when we are measuring angles in bearing it is also in that format without the cardinal points there is no bearing so let us examine the cardinal points the figure below shows the four cardinal directions you have it this is the is the point of intersection to the up you have north down is south to the left you have west to the east you, to the right you have east the vertical line indicates the north and south this is the vertical line while the horizontal line indicates the left to the west direction so from the point of intersection to the left you have west and to the right the east the angle between north and east that is from north to east the angle is equal to 90 degrees therefore the angle between north or the angle from north to west is also 90 degrees from south to west is also 90 degrees from south to east is also 90 degrees so each 
quadrant, the angle is 90 degrees. That is for the four cardinal directions. The figure below shows the angles between the four cardinal directions. In this figure, I'm trying to explain what I have just said that the angle from north to east is 90 degrees, from north to west is 90 degrees, from south to west is 90 degrees, and from south to east is also 90 degrees. We also have the eight cardinal points. Apart from the four main cardinal directions, there are four other directions, namely northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. Northeast is in the middle of north and east and the angle between north and east is 90 degrees therefore the angle between north and northeast is 45 degrees since northeast is in the middle of north and east so you 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 divide that 90 degrees the angle from north to east into two equal parts so that the angle between north and northeast is 45 degrees. The figure below shows the eight cardinal points. When you are to draw it, you start with the with the four main cardinal points. So let's do that. This is the vertical line which indicates north and south while this is the horizontal line which indicates west and east so from here you take it this way you have northeast you take it down you have southwest you take it this way you have northwest and you take it this way you have southeast after drawing the four main cardinal directions, you add the other four to make it eight. We also have the 16 cardinal points. Following the eight cardinal directions, the figure below shows the 16 cardinal direction. Listen attentively as I illustrate the diagram you are seeing already. To start, you begin by drawing the four main cardinal directions, that is north, south, west, east. You add the next four. So this is north, east, north, west, Southwest, southeast. Between north and northeast, you have another one. So you are to add another eight to the eight you have already to make it sixteen. So between north and northeast, you have this as north northeast. This point is between southeast and east. That is south, east, east. This point is between south and south, east. That is south, south, east. This point is between south and south, west. So you have south, south, west. This point is between south, west and west. That is south, west, west. This point is between north, this point is northwest, then you have west, so you have northwest, west. This point is between north and northwest, that is north, northwest. So you have the 16 cardinal directions. 
if you are asked to draw 32 from this place you add another 16 to make it 32 and so on types of bearing number one we have cardinal point or compass or soldier's bearing in this type of bearing emphasis is laid on the primary point that is north and south points in this type of bearing we consider the two primary points the north and south thus we have examples like north 50 degrees east not 195 degrees west south 105 degrees east south 225 degrees west etc what this means is that in cardinal point bearing movement can start from either the north or south but towards the east or west the second type of bearing is three digit or surveyor's bearing here emphasis is laid only on the north pole we have just one option here the north pole all movements must start from the north all bearings must appear in three digits especially for angles less than 100 degrees so if you have angles between one and nine you have to add two zeros behind to make it three digits if you have angles between 10 and 99 you have to add one zero behind to make it three digits then you have others in three digit bearing this type of bearing is used in solving bearing problems so when we are to consider practical bearing problems we only make use of three digits or surveyors bearing notation for bearings a bearing is the angle between a line and a reference direction that direction is the point of contact often measured clockwise from the north if it is three digits movement starts from the north movement starts from the north if you are considering three digit bearing suppose a surveyor refers to these directions north 50 degrees east south 75 degrees east south 60 degrees west and north 30 degrees west the direction of north 50 degrees east means that the movement should start from the north followed by an acute angle that is 50 degrees towards the east that is you you draw the the main cardinal direction you are interested in north and east so movement will start from north till you have the acute angle of 50 degrees this is the notation for north 50 degrees east let's consider another direction south 75 degrees east means that movement should start from the south followed by the acute angle 75 degrees towards the east that is from south through 75 degrees towards east remember in cardinal point bearing we said that emphasis is laid on the south 
and not pose or not point. That means movement can start from either the north or from the south. So you you you, you have the four main cardinal direction. So we are interested in south east. You start moving from south until you cover 75 degrees in the east direction so this is the notation for south 75 degrees east from the above examples we can deduce that the directions of north and south usually show first the two primary points following the acute angle towards either west or east movement does not start from west or east you start from either north or east and you move towards west or east end of lesson one Thanks for watching and learning. Don't forget, watch out for more from the voice of Peter Cos. Lastly, if you are not safe, your life is in crisis, your life is in trouble. To avoid all of that, you have to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and personal Savior every day of your life. If you are saved already, congratulations. Live righteously and be prepared because on the last day, some will be taken and some will be left. Be good to yourself. Study your books. Stay out of trouble. Do the needful at all times. Flee every appearance of evil. Don't defraud others to make money. Find something good and genuine to do with your hands and your brain. And the Lord will bless you. Goodbye and stay tuned.